Hello, everybody. We're going to present today an introduction to the fundamental review of the trading book. That's a complex piece of regulation that impacts all those banks that have a separate trading book, designated trading book on their balance sheet, separate and distinct to the banking book. It is a complex piece of regulation. There's a lot to it, but we're going to try and cover the absolute basics of it in the next couple of minutes. OK, first of all, it's uh, part of the final form of Basel III. Uh, as it says there on the slide, it's the incoming Pillar 1 capital standard for market risk, market risk taken by banks on their trading book. Uh, the final standards were published in 2019, almost seven years after the first consultation paper. The implementation date originally set by Basel Committee was Jan 2023, but it doesn't look like that's going to be met. Nonetheless, it is something that the banks are gearing up for and should be in place by 2025. As I said, it's part of the final form of Basel III. The FRTB regulation is part of the Basel III framework, sometimes known as Basel IV, but Basel III is correct. First of all, let's get uh, straight absolutely what we mean by trading book. Um, trading book required to engage in market making, bond underwriting and proprietary trading. Uh, many banks that do not engage in these activities also have trading books. There are several reasons. For example, you might have uh, certain instruments like uh, derivative instruments, derivative positions, uh, that are booked in a trading book, even if they're used for hedging. Sometimes banks want latitude to run non-material derivative mismatches, and uh, sometimes banks transfer their banking book risk to a trading book as a means of bringing all market risk together in one place. However, that approach wouldn't be compatible with FRTB, so it would need to be adjusted. In essence, where you have anything that isn't on the banking book, that is the trading book, and FRTB will apply. It has three capital regimes, a standardized approach, a simplified standardized approach, which is the current regime for market risk in the trading book with penal scaling factors and the internal models approach, which is where it starts to get really complex. FRTB sets more rigorous criteria for allocation of positions to the trading book. It has a very clear blue water, if that's the expression, between trading book and, boundary and banking book. So there's an absolutely strong boundary between the two. There's no crossover between the two under, unless it's very specific and special conditions. And it uh, rewrites a standardized approach using a value at risk type methodology, expected shortfall with preset parameters. There's also a radical revision of the internal models approach under the FRTB regime. Most banks expect to see an increase in their capital requirements arising out of FRTB compared to the current arrangement. Right, we're going to look at the standardized approach here. The capital charge under the standardized approach of FRTB is the apex of a very large calculation pyramid. Absolutely, that's possibly an understatement. At its highest level, it is the absolute sum of three charges. The sensitivity-based charge, the default risk charge, and the residual risk add-on charge. We define default risk uh, as the jump to default risk charge for all default credit risky default exposed positions, okay? The sensitivity based charge is risks that can be expressed as factor sensitivities. Now this, at the high level, the standardized approach um, in standardized FRTB defines factors, delta and vega factors, risk factors for seven risk classes, which I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, these are, and it applies prescribed stress shifts to each factor to determine what well, the capital requirement of each factor risk exposure would be. It sets out a <clears throat> excuse me methodology to aggregate the results of these factor shifts up to an overall delta and vega charge for the risk type in question, also allowing for or incorporating portfolio effects, <clears throat> uh, for example, effects of correlation and a diversified portfolio. Where you have a second order type risk or negative curvature, let's call that gamma, where you have gamma risk present, standardized FRTB sets out a methodology to calculate curvature at the factor level and to aggregate the curvature effects up to an overall curvature charge. Again, looking at the three parts of standardized approach for pillar one, these three high level charges are the sum of, as it says there on the slide, seven charges for sensitivity based risk, up to three charges for default risk and up to two for residual risk. And you can see on the slide there, on slide nine, how it's broken down each of these high level charges are broken down. And let's illustrate just by way of example, the sensitivity based charge in the next couple of slides. You can see how that's broken down. There we go, the seven factor uh, risk factors. Each risk class charge is the absolute sum of a charge for delta, vega and negative gamma risk. So you can see how that's broken down. Interest rate risk, FX risk, equity risk, credit spread risk, non-securitized, uh, credit spread risk in a securitization uh, asset, correlation trading, <coughs> 
and commodity risk. Okay, and, if you, and they're all aggregated at the end. You can see where the total is, and that's aggregated down at the bottom. Okay, you can imagine if you look on the next slide, you can imagine that uh, some banks, not all banks, will have exposures in all these factor sensitivities. Uh, if you look at commodity, for example, uh, there are a number of banks with a trading book that wouldn't be trading in commodities, so that would be a zero sensitivity there. So not all of them would apply to every single item, but of course, if it does, if it does apply, you need to account for it. So when you aggregate, when you aggregate all this, the factors are the vertices, the key rates on interest rate curves, individual equities or equity indices, individual credit names or indices, vertices on volatility term structures. These factor sensitivities times the factor shifts are aggregated up to buckets, allowing for the portfolio effects in, in a book of, 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 of exposures, a book of exposures. And these buckets are the currencies for interest rate risk and the sectors for equity and credit risk. And these bucket level capital charges then aggregated up to an overall risk class charge. So to tie it all up, the standardized approach for default risk and residual risk is the sum of these three separate charges, sensitivity based charge, default risk charge and residual risk add-on charge. Now, I wouldn't be complete speaking about FRTB. We could easily spend a whole week talking about this piece of regulation. I wouldn't be complete without mentioning the internal models approach. There is the internal models approach. It's a radical rewrite of the existing internal models regime, which first was published in 1996, amended after the bank crash. The new standard changes the level of internal model approval from the overall firm to individual trading desk level and requires desks that fail to secure internal model approval to remain on the standardized approach. So it's not bank wide, it's per trading desk. It also changes the basis of the capital calculation from a value at risk methodology to the expected shortfall methodology. And it incorporates differential holding liquidation periods for different instrument classes in place of the standard 10 day holding period. So that holding period differs depending on what type of uh, assets or instrument is in question. Uh, it also introduces a potentially or possibly controversial new test for the modelability, if such a word exists, of factors and requires risk factor models to have a minimum level of predictive power with respect to PL as a model validation standard. Okay, as I said, it's quite a complex process. Some banks may feel that uh, going for this internal models approach isn't worth the, uh, how shall I put it, to the process involved and it may remain on the standardized approach. Uh, it may not even lead to capital savings. That's something for banks in this space to consider. Okay, there we are then. That's our whistle stop tour through FRTB. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon.